Hello! Thank you very much for joining me. My name is Fable Narrative, and let's get right into this. From the website We Got This Covered, Avatar The Last Airbender live action show will, report, will, will reportedly make some big changes. And that's kind of an issue, and we'll go into detail as to why what that issue might be. Now, it's it, Avatar The Last Airbender has hit Netflix. Everyone who has a net, Netflix subscription has watched it. It's popular. And that's kind of the issue. I'm, 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 it's not the fact that something's popular, but let's just think of Game of Thrones. For the first four seasons, first two or three seasons, it was amazing. First three to four seasons was amazing. First, and then, then five and six were acceptable, were good, kept going. Seven, debatable, kind of like, I don't know what to do. And then eight, kind of just, that, that's what happened. And then what happened with all the average viewers? Well, all the popularity of it went away. They moved on to something else. And one of the biggest issues when it comes to popular things is people rush to it, it gets a lot of attention, it shakes up the original material, and then after everybody has gangbanged the thing, they move on and everybody who has been a fan has to clean up. It's like some everybody who has been who has been a fan before it was popular, before it's been popularized throughout the entire United States and including throughout the entire uh, world, that after this popularity is come and gone, guess what? People have to people who were fans of the original material have to clean up the the cum stained whore that at the party. So. Um, there's a reason I'm bringing up all this. I know it's, I'm, I'm, I'm sort of tiptoeing around the topic, but uh, we'll get right into the article. According to, let's zoom in on this. There we go. Uh, let's do one more. Okay. According to the sources close to WGCT, this website, the same ones who told us a Witcher prequel and an Extraction sequel were in the works well before Netflix officially announced them. The streaming giant's live-action adaptation of Avatar The Last Airbender will reportedly make some big changes to the original story. Let me say that again. Will reportedly make some big changes to the original story. These include, but will not be limited to, the introduction of new characters and subplots. One of the biggest issues that I have with almost any other, any person, any activity, any event, when it comes to original storyline, leave it alone. Make your own stuff. Make it become popular. Have fun. Do what you want with it. But you go and change the original content, and I'm, I'm, Hmm. <laughs> okay, I'll add more details and more explanation as to why, but Michael D. Um, I apologize for but butchering the names if I will, if I do. Michael Dante D. Martino and Brian Konietzko. Konietzko. So I apologize if I mispronounce those names. They were the original creators, including uh, Aaron Az, however you pronounce the last name, but Aaron. He was the head writer of The Last Airbender, of Avatar The Last Airbender. Aaron, I don't know why he was not part of the uh, Avatar Korra series, but Avatar Korra has not been successful. It has a lot of controversy, and they actually retcon the original material. Greatest example of the entire thing is when in Avatar The Last Airbender, who are the only people that can bend lightning? Who are the only ones who can shoot lightning from their freaking fingertips? Is it the common folk? Or is it the top tier, most professional, well-rounded, well not, not as in good people, but most professional when it comes to being a bender? The martial arts, the perfection that must be required, the amount of duty, responsibility that is put upon you. The three people are Uncle Iroh, Azula, Princess Azula, and Ma and not Master, what was I thinking? Uh, Phoenix King, <laughs> the Phoenix King, um, Fire Lord Ozai. Those are the three people that have been in the original Avatar The Last Airbender have been shown. There might be another one and I apologize if I am missing anybody, but those are the only three that have been shown to actually shoot lightning. Guess what? In the Avatar The Last, uh, in Avatar Korra, 
anybody, the common folk, can shoot lightning. There's no training involved. Uh, involved. There's nothing that you particularly need to do. You just have this as inherent gift. There's no skill. There's no. Need, there's no work. There's no um, heart. There's no hard effort or even style of bending. All you have to do is just go. Weep. I can do it now. There's no even. Even Zuko couldn't do it. He could probably eventually, but in the show, the only thing he was able to do through the entire series was to just redirect the lightning, not to actually shoot the lightning, because it is a very intense bending. But in Avatar Korra, the common folk, anyone can do it. It makes the entire action inconsequential. It makes it so it seems so silly, dumb, and stupid. Is it that they were hoarding the the skill of lightning to themselves? Like again, that's one thing that you could probably it, like it, expand upon. But there were only three people that could do it, and even that they could do it. It took a lot of energy and power and to do it from masters. Azula was a perfectionist and was brought up to be perf perfect because a she's a, a sociopath. Uh, so she doesn't have any feel. Um, I don't say that she doesn't have any feelings, but she has a lot of repressed feelings, I'd say. And she goes towards what is what, uh, what the best she can possibly be because she's just. Uh, she, oh, that's my phone. I apologize. Um, that she is of royalty, and it's not something that you work on. It's something that you're born with, and she carries it wholeheartedly. And it's amazing. She's freaking terrifying in the best possible way. So, and I have a lot of criticisms about that, but I, want, I wanted to get that one little piece. That's just bending of lightning. That's just bending of lightning. The like one aspect, and they got it wrong. They're so, I, if, I, if I could go through the entire, once Avatar Korra drops on Netflix, I might go through the entire series bit by bit by bit and show what in the hell what is this showing? Why is this here? A great example is when um, the equalists, those who are non-benders who have been oppressed by benders, well, because of the, um, their formation, their group, because of the rapid um, d development, the rapid progress of technology, it has equalized everyone. You want a fire bend? Here's a flamethrower. You want an earth bend? Here's an earth moving machine. You want to? You could do whatever you want. Benders have an incredible leg up on somebody who is not a bender. That because of a rapid development of technology and progression of it, the common folk, the people who are at the bottom of the society, that class structure, have greater access to more power individually. So as an equalist, it doesn't make any sense. But if they cut back the technology by even half, show that there's a new technology being built because not even just because of the progress of war, but also because of metal bending and the, 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 the technology that might be derived from bending metal in that world. But it rapidly, it, it increases too fast. <laughs> it's like, okay, but, okay, okay, I could go on and on. Let's get into the article. Before Avatar diehards began to freak out, okay, well, I've already done that. I got it out of my system, but don't worry, I have Buku's amounts in storage and in reservoirs waiting to be let loose. Let loose. It's important to remember that most likely these changes have not been ordered by Netflix or any other mon money-hungry executives. Okay, first and foremost, uh, the last the last Airbender was created by Michael D. Montoni and Brian Kin and Br Michael and Brian, I apologize, and then written by Aaron, the head writer. He was one of the greatest per he was one of the greatest reasons as to why the story was great. There's a there's a few flaws in it. I'm not Avatar the Last Airbender is not riddled with is not immune to flaws. Nothing is immune to flaws. It's just uh, its foundation was phenomenal. The in, the continuity of certain events were not held in a vacuum. If you start to think about why certain things are in the world, they literally just are. Well, in the the continuity is broken, and it's just well. Here's a new way of doing it. It's like, well, what about the continuity of the old? It's like I don't understand why there would be a gigantic lion turtle that would happen at the very end of the third season in Avatar: The Last Airbender. But guess what? That it's okay. This is new material. Why is this here? And even it's it's one of the greatest things that even Soka said. 
Sokka. Sokka said is that, oh, that's Avatar stuff. That doesn't count. Because Avatar is a little bit quirky with whatever it is that he does. He can talk to spirits. <laughs> he is the great divide. He is the great, com he, he is the bridge among both worlds of the spirit world and the physical world. And again, if, if we were to criticize that, that would be a great criticism to bring up about how, why was there a gigantic lion turtle? It had nothing to do with anything. And I would agree with you. But they sort of retcon some things in Avatar Korra. <laughs> it's like, whoa, my gosh, with just that thing alone. Uh, they do a lot of fan service and a lot of people pass on it because it's like, oh, hey, look, I remember that from the original series. I, and then you just kind of forget what's going on. <laughs> but, you know, I have to sub, 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 make, substantialize, I don't know if it's the correct word, make sub substance my arguments, and I will be doing that at a later date, and I apologize I'm not doing this now. We're just going through the article, which is taking ages to do. So, money-hungry executives, and, well, money-hungry executives, the people who created the film, just because you created something, which is another critical thing as to why Michael and Brian, why those two names are kind of a bother to me, is... Uh, Peter Jackson created the Lord of the Rings trilogy. Phenomenal work. He lost weight, like 30, 40 pounds doing it. And as Mahler said on this YouTube channel, he said, well, it'll be great forever. It's very true. It'll, the Lord of the Rings extended uh, cuts of each, the entire nine hour trilogy will be great and phenomenal forever. But there's a lot of criticism and a lot of issues with the new of uh, the Hobbit trilogy that he created. There's too much CGI. The dwarves don't look like dwarves. They just look like little humans. I mean, that's what, well, that's what Hobbits are. Well, not really. Hobbits are kind of the same, but the, uh, just, okay. Um, there's a lot of issues with the, the Hobbit trilogy. It's not whether or not you can enjoy it. It's whether or not it, there's continuity, whether or not the characters are intact, whether or not why is this person doing this? Well, if this happened, it's like, well, couldn't they just uh, take, uh, have the eagles take the hobbits to Mount, uh, I want to say Mount Doom, <laughs> to Mordor, and have them cast it into the fire? A, that would be, that's a very common criticism of the first movie. It's like, well, and, but in the books, in the, in the, the story, in the, in the original books, is if I understand correctly, is that the eagles were part of the the elite, the um, the the god born, the born of god, sort of speak. That the elves were of that high power structure. I, it's I don't I don't remember what that word is. It's like they were the angels, and the eagles were part of that like great great power that. Um, and if they were to see the ring, that they would want to also have the ring themselves because. Um, it's just like anything, any, anyone born of that, uh, of, of that ilk would have, would have seeked out the ring for themselves, which is one of the reasons why the, he only, gr he only grants or only seeks out the, um, Gandalf only seeks out the eagles to go rescue them is because if they did it beforehand, the eagles might have actually taken the ring for themselves. It's weird without knowing and read the books, but I just, uh, heard about a few things, did my, a little bit of research, but that's what I, that's what I understand myself. Okay. <sighs> Rather, we imagine they're being um, they're being made by the creators of the original Nickelodeon animated series, Michael, Dante, Michael, and Brian, whom the streamer has hired to hired uh, to reboot their own magnum opus, and that's an issue for me. Don't reboot it. Add on to it. There's a lot of fundamental is issues with Avatar Korra, but the fact that they didn't reboot it or make a new, make re or renewing it, make, make new of the thing, they didn't go to Avatar The Last Airbender and tried to reconceptualize it and be like, oh, here's a new world. Okay, well, why don't, it, what? It's not like its own world. Now there's just different universes that you can just create. Like, I know it's story, but the continuity within this world, what is happening? And ah, it's when you change the past, it's like, well, we get to change it however we want, but what if we change, what if what we change turns out to suck in 20 years? Well, we'll just create it again. We'll just recreate it. We'll just recreate it. It's like, okay, leave the, leave the past alone, honor and respect what you've created, and then create something new find a way to make a better 
Avatar Korra by not changing Avatar Korra. We understand the issues of Avatar Korra. Don't try to reach, don't try to change or retcon anything of Avatar Korra. Build upon it, pulling from the original source, not Avatar Korra, but Avatar The Last Airbender. You do that, I think you'll be set. I, th I, I think it'll at least be better. <laughs> but I think they're going to be taking the success that they took from Avatar Korra, and then they're going to be retconning a lot of things. They're going to retcon, they're going to change. It's like, oh, Avatar, um, Avatar well... <laughs> He, and I think uh, down below, yeah, Dose X, X Machina, but let's keep going. In the past, um, what are the names? Michael and Brian, I apologize, I, I don't know how to pronounce your last name. Dia, D, Mark, Diamond, okay. Michael and Brian have already mentioned that they are, they, they'd make some changes to the live action adaptation, such as the introduction of original supporting characters. And while we don't know the specifics of what they have planned just yet, we are told that they want to rework the original ending, too, which felt like, uh, which people felt was kind of like a do, dose, 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 dose ex machina, <laughs> a changing of things. And my, my, the biggest question is, what do you mean by changing the original ending? By A, when you rework and change the original ending, one of them is wrong. It's a different universe, and if we're watching a different universe, one of them is false. One of them is wrong. Well, why can't you just enjoy it? I can enjoy it, and I will enjoy it the original one. I don't know about the new one that they're going to be creating, but if you're going to be changing the universe, it is a different universe. It's like saying Avatar Korra is not part of the original. It's not canon. I like to think that it isn't, but it is. It is canon, and that sucks. The thing is, I would actually argue that it is not canon because the continuity and the world in which they are living in is not, is not the same. Re they, re they reworked the mechanics of the original one so they can create the new one. Rather than just basing the new one and trying to maybe adapt or evolve it to whatever the universe would have created. As for example, again, using me as an example. When, I, I, again, I'm butchering the name, but the, the, the Underlord boss who was a bloodbender who didn't need to use uh, the full moon. You don't have to do that. You don't. You don't have to use the moon. Okay, fine. He's an aberrant or an a, an aberration. He's 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 someone of a unique thing like a uh, combustion bending. Okay, I would ex like. Okay, fine, fine. But the fact that he, when he was going through trial and he was voted or he was uh, his the verdict was guilty. He opened his eyes and looked really intense. And then all 50, 40, uh, 40 to 100 people that were in the room all succumbed to their blood bending. There's no physical movements uh, associated to the original bending style. You just can do it now. Oh, you want a blood bend? You can do it now. There's no physical association with your body and doing the actual martial arts to actually generate bending to happen. And there could be different bending styles, but there is an association with your physical body. But you could also have a telekinetic, a, a, a telekinetic uh, like in the Red Lotus in the third season, I believe. Uh, she didn't have any arms, but used water as a placement for her arms. I thought that was a kind of cool thing, but wait a second. Was she a telekinetic or was she bending? Because if she was a, um, a, a hydrokinetic, a bending of water, that changes, that changes things. You don't... You're, you're not messing up the past, you're creating something new, an actual telekinetic. And one question would be, what, how many people in the world are telekinetics? Oh, maybe uh, people who are bending are telekinetics, and maybe um, in the first season, I know I'm jumping around a bit, but in the first season of Avatar Korra, the reason uh, the uh, Amon, the leader of the Equalists, who were this terrorist organization, pretty much like Black Lives Matter, um, that were ta that Amon were, was using quote unquote spirit uh, spirit bending to take away the powers of benders publicly, but he himself spoiler warning is a water bender, being a water bender that that is blocking the cheese inside the body, and because of the blocking the bender couldn't do it. But the question is if you're if you're blocking the chi for a bender to to bend, can you not unlock 
the chi of other people, I mean, that would be a phenomenal expansion in which we could have gone. That could have been season two. There could have been a, 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 reha a rehashing of how many people could have actually been unleashed. We could have seen an entire new generation, and instead of the fourth season, we see in the, thir in the second season of there being new airbenders. Now, how it could have happened, what the story could have been, I have no idea, but the plot could have expanded in that direction because of the continuity within the world. That something just doesn't happen, something happens because something happens. It doesn't happen in a vacuum. <sighs> so if this is Avatar Aang, what the fuck? He's wearing glasses? No! What the fuck? <laughs> it's like if Sokka was unironically a, a, like he was a smoker. Like what? <laughs> oh, please. Please, for the fuck's sake. No! God, no! Oh, this is evil! Like, true evil. Like, Hitler-level evil. Because, you know, they're the same. <laughs> but, really? What the fuck? No! 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 What the fuck is he wearing? If this is the new live-action series, what it the f he's he's wearing pants, Aang is wearing traditional robe type deal of, that a monk would wear. This is not monk like. This is not Aang. This is one of the reasons I thought this was just fan art. Okay, just want to make certain the fan art reveals. Oh please for that. Oh, mm, please no, please just be fan art. Because if this is actual reveals, oh what do you mean? Reveals what? I have no idea. It's not saying anything. But, oh my gosh. I, oh, okay. Fan art. Fan art. Okay. F okay. Just want to make certain. Because if this... Oh, please. Why the fuck, as a fan art, would you give him glasses? This isn't even Aang. You, he can be an airbender. Yeah, fantastic. This is a great... Actually, it's phenomenal art, I would say. This is actually comic book worthy art that I would enjoy, uh, enjoy reading. But, can I, I, oh, please, why is this here? Again, if this is hinting at anything, I'm so scared. For those who haven't rewatched the entire series on Netflix already, a bit of a refresher might be in order here. In the days leading up to his battle, um, Avatar Aang, in the, bat, in the days leading up to the battle with the uh, Fire, Lord, uh, Fire Lord, Aang loses his nerve and flees. In solitude, and he gets on the back of a giant lion turtle, and then he goes out into the middle of nowhere, it's, and, He's okay. It's just kind of more of a uh, plot, not plot, not plot armor, but like, hey, here's a magical random moment with a gigantic lion turtle. <laughs> uh, in solitude, he seeks the guidance of other avatars to help him overcome a nasty moral conundrum. But Avatar Kiyoshi is the worst. I'm just gonna say, Avatar Kiyoshi is the worst. She's horrible. As an airbender, and for the reason is that she she abandoned the entire world because she wanted to save her hometown and took the entire hometown as in, off the mainland and made it into an island and said fuck you to everybody else who was actually the the victim of the of the tyrant. So she's she's the worst. She's really the worst. And then they made her into an official lesbian or bisexual in the comics. It's like, what the fuck does that have anything to do with anything? And then Avatar Korra was actually saying, oh my gosh, Avatar Kyoshi didn't progress lesbian stuff enough. My goodness. <laughs> Fucking woke shit. As an, av as an airbender, he's, an, he's a pacifist and a vegetarian who has vowed to never kill. So how can he beat his foe without murdering him? That's a great question. They did it phenomenally. They did it in a way that did subvert my expectation, but they did it in a way that was that had continuity within the show. That there was bending. Um, everybody the, that benders could bend. So he took away the bending. So there is just a regular human being. <laughs> yeah, I mean he could still murder, but he's he's not as uh, powerful or as effective without the bending. If you really want to make things all equal, why not just remove everybody's bending? Boom, problem solved. <laughs> 
When all hope seems lost, Aang receives help from the unlikeliest, uh, likely, likeliest of allies, a gigantic lion turtle. This animal, which claims it's existed, um, it's existed, it has existed since the dawn of time, gives Aang a mysterious new power that allows him to take some um, away someone else's bending abilities. Now, here's the question. I don't think it actually gives him bending. I think it just more of unlocks the the power that was with inside Aang. Aang had a, the with before before time we were able to bend not the elements but ourselves. That's what I th I think one of the quotes is from the the giant lion turtle saying to Aang trying to solve a problem of instead of killing him, how do I how do I stop him? So I think he just unlocked it rather than giving it to him. Aang, mysterious new power to yeah, someone's been away. Although this sequence was eventually put into context in a later series, uh, I'd have to rewatch it, but I don't think I remember it correctly. Uh, it being a good thing. I, I have to rewatch the Avatar Korra to remember what happened with one, uh, with one uh, the first Avatar. Again, uh, B1. One, one, the first one. Ha ha. Ha 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 ha. Oh, man. It did appear, uh, it, did, it did appear kind of a shoehorned, um, it did kind, ki wait, what? It did appear kind of shoehorned, okay, that didn't, that doesn't look, that doesn't look correct grammarly. It didn't appear, okay, it looked as though it was shoehorned into the end of the Avatar of the Last Airbender. Come on, guys, be better. Um, how the show's creators would change it uh, remains to be seen, but in the meantime, feel free to leave a comment down below letting us know if you are on board with these alterations. One thing that I'll give credit to is uh, we got this covered. They're just reporting the situation. They're just reporting what they heard, and it seems to be very valid, but credible. It seems to be incredibly ca uh, credible for um, it being a possibility, being real. So I don't blame them and at, at any regard. I actually, if anything, blame them for the, the grammar at the very last bit. And at the lion, the giant lion turtle doesn't give him the ability, doesn't give Aang the ability, but instead unlocks the ability because we bent the, the we bent the power, we bent the energy with inside ourselves, but we bent the uh, not the elements, but the energy inside of ourselves. Uh, he might have said it a little bit differently, but I think he just unlocked it. It looks like he gave him something, but I think he just unlocked it. And what I would like to do is just go down and read everybody's comments. I've, I've read one or two of these comments, but uh, I, I think it is important to actually kind of see what other people are thinking here. So, ha, Hobie, it looks like hobo. <laughs> I'm in the camp, uh, I am in the camp of people who don't understand why anyone would bother remaking the Avatar series, especially as live action. Any changes of the original, I'll be very skeptical of. Same here, I agree with you. Often success happens by accident, which is true. Luck is an incredible important part as to why somebody is successful. But those who are successful are those who continue doing it and, can, uh, and continue doing it, doing it, doing it, doing it, doing it. They were just lucky to be in that situation to capitalize on, that, on the success they were able to. Because of, something, because of something the creators didn't realize they were doing but, may, but make all the different they were doing, but make all the difference in the end product. Very often when things are rebooted, that something is lost and the result is a huge wasted effort. I would say Avatar Korra was the same way. It started out amazing. The first season, I think they did, if they just did one season or two, maybe three, I think they would have done good, uh, done well. But they kept d introducing such, such grand stakes in each season that I felt exhausted at the end of each season rather than this overarching large one, this one grand challenge that was presented for the Avatar to go achieve and had a lot of things that they had to overcome throughout it all rather than just like from start to, fe start to end in first season. Well, start to end from the second season. Instead of having little chunks, you had one grand adventure to go through. So, sounds um, from come on, K-Man, <laughs> sounds like the ending problem is just the writer's opinion because I've literally never heard that anywhere. I, I agree with that. I agree with that. that. I've never ever heard that there's a problem with the ending or need to change it. Okay, I don't know what ending they're talking about. I think everything was wrapped up in a nice little bow. Um, Zuko was talking to his father about where is my mother? And they never talk about it, but they, they make fun of it. They poke fun at it, poke fun at it 
in the Avatar Korra, which is kind of like a ah, uh, like it's uh, okay, okay. They're they're making fun of it, but at the same time, it, it's more of like a ha 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 ha. That's that's sort of what the entire series felt like. It's like oh guys, hey look, something that you remember, dangling the keys. Hey look guys, something you remember, dangling the keys. That's what Avatar Korra felt like. Again, hindsight. Again, I, I was so on board from start to finish. But then after, in hind again, hindsight, and I started thinking about it. It didn't make any sense. Like, well, what, why, why is this here? Avatar Korra is kind of a bitch in this scene, and everybody's bailing her out. Why are people defending her? Well, in this scene, I don't get why this is happening. Well, that kind of breaks this point. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Okay, no, I agree with it. But if Netflix were smart, they would hire Aaron, Aaron to write it. Everything that made The Last Airbender a masterpiece was completely lost in Korra. I agree. Things that all boiled down to writing besides a couple like bending not um a cup a couple like bending, okay, not looking cool anymore. While they created the garbage that is Korra, I wouldn't say it's garbage as in it just demolishes the entire world of Avatar The Last Airbender. I think that they do some things correct. It's just not canon. It can't be canon because it's not in the same world. That's how I would put it. It could be a phenomenal fan fiction. If you call it as a phenomenal fan fiction, I would agree. I would get on board with that and I'd actually defend it. But calling it absolute garbage, I would say it's just a destruction of anything that came before it. That it just utterly annihilates the canon that came before but, you know, garbage, pfft, that's a problematic word. <laughs> so we're going to call him Aaron rather than Yaz. So. But Aaron, the, the, the head writer of The Last Airbender, is actually something that I, came, that I was actually talking about. So, this, so you know, K-Man and I, if we should have a conversation about this. I'd, I'd totally talk to you. Um, Aaron, um, wait a minute, Cora. Aaron's new show, I guess, on Netflix is winning Emmys. Let me say that again. Aaron, who was the writer of The Last Airbender... It, he his, The shows that he's been writing has been winning Emmys. Now, winning Emmys or any award is not a guarantee or a rite of passage as to whether or not you are a good writer. Okay? Because you can there can be a show that does not win an Emmy, but can be nominated for it and still be better than any one that actually wins. Because, you know, the, the award system, they grant it to whoever they want it to be rather than whatever the actual content was, so... Not that we don't need Michael or Brian too, just need all three if it's going to be any good. I'd agree with that. It's like, who was the person that, like, three people made uh, The Last Airbender successful. So let's only do it with two of them. It didn't go so hot, it didn't do so well. So let's continue on which path? Aaron, who helped us make something successful, or the two of them that made Korra that was half as good at best? Let's keep going down with half as best, and let's just do whatever we want. Okay, okay. Uh, no, doesn't work that way. It's, it's I'm, I'm assuming it's actually going to be crap. I was so looking forward to it until I, I heard this news. I am sure they will find a way to ruin it like all other sequels and remakes done nowadays. I'd agree with that. Don't remake the original. Make a sequel. Make a prequel that explains the situation. Like uh, Han Solo, I think they did some f silly things that, not retconned, but why did they explain as though um, Cal Carissian w uh, was banging robots? Like, what did that have anything to do with it? Like, oh, no, no, we're just very open and lucid in the space. Yeah, that's called being lonely. If you're banging a robot, you're lonely. <laughs> that's, that's, you're not a stud, you're freaking lonely. <laughs> There is, a, there is a reason people loved the original. Changing it too much to make a few people happy is not wise. Like trying to make, hey, Korra is now gay. Now let's make comic books and all these stories and def definitions and descriptions and history. Like, oh, everything's gay now. It's like, okay, I don't care if you're gay. Shut up about it. I don't like watching a story, reading a story, have anything to do with like, hey guys, look how straight we are. Shut up. That's so annoying! <laughs> oh my gosh! It's any political ideology, LGBT, Black Lives Matter, uh, feminism, any ideology based off of uh, an immutable characteristic just leads to failure. I, that's as political as I'll get, but that's what, I, that's what my stance is, because that also calls out white supremacy. 
all all of them are not the same but they're all bad if <laughs> they're not the same they have different calibers of badness but they're not good it's like oh but lgbt is whatever well it is not political lgbtqi uh, lgbtqia what does the a stand for it's ally I can be not gay and be LGBT, because I'm an ally. But if I'm not an ally and I call out against it and I disagree with the entire organization because it's different than just being a gay person, like, can you be a woman and not a feminist in today's culture? Like, can you be a woman and not a feminist but still be strong, powerful, amazing, and happen to look beautiful? Can those things occur without being a feminist? And if the answer is no, you have to. That's, well, that's the definition of what a feminist is. Uh, yes. Are they, okay. But at the same time, I, I don't associate with feminism because I think that any time that you want to shave your head, uh, cut out your ovaries and say, fuck men, that's what for feminism has been come today. It's like, oh, that's, that's it's like, I, I agree that that's what true feminism is. It's a very strong woman. But at the same time, we need also strong men. You're not just an, I'm an independent. That's the same thing of like, well, I'm an independent guy and don't care to get married. It's like, okay, you can do whatever you want. Doesn't mean that it's good. <laughs> it's like, you should probably make babies. Babies are pretty good. I mean, that that's what how the species has been surviving. It, that, that's a good thing, making babies. <laughs> I would say that. Like, take religion out of it. Making babies is pretty freaking good on the scale of goodness, I would say. Oh man. Wow, you realize Wow, you realize there weren't any white people in Avatar the Last Airbender, right? Holy fuck. This is why I'm so against identity politics. What did the what the fuck does that have anything to do with whether or not the Last Airbender was good? Ryan, you're a fucking bitch boy. You're a cunt. You're literally a bane to society and a virus. Your type of activity is what makes beta males a thing. It's like, hey guys, hey, uh, there's no white people, so I shouldn't like it? Hey guys, there's white people, so I should like it? Like, what are you talking about? The entire series was based on Eastern and indigenous pe people. Indigenous peoples. Did you, did you, did you see anywhere here? Oh, okay, I, di I didn't finish reading it. Okay, let me finish reading it. Let me finish reading it. Oh my gosh. There is a reason uh, changing it too much would make people not wise. It is fine to develop some story, uh, uh, some deeper storylines that fans would like, but within reason. I am a minority, okay? I, a, I don't fucking care. That should, let's read the entire sentence without reading the word minority because that has no claim. Like, you can have a point and it still be as valid as somebody who is of a different skin color, ethnicity, etc., or whatever. And I enjoy Avatar the way that it is. Okay, that's it. We don't need to know that she was in a, a, a minority. She just enjoyed Avatar the way that it, it was. I don't need uh, I don't need to see some more brown skinned people or LGBT. I am secure in my identity. Others should others should try it. I am secure in my identity. Yes, I I agree with that. But the fact you actually had to use the word minority is kind of an issue of like, hey guys, I'm not white, and I liked it. And then Ryan comes out tell literally mansplaining. I'm not, I don't like using the word, but Ryan is mansplaining to Lisa, who is a minority. My assumption is that Ryan, that's a very white name. You're a, I'm, I'm assuming you're a white guy telling an SJW, telling Lisa, who's probably black, telling her that she, that, wow, you realize there weren't any white people in Avatar The Last Airbender, right? Okay. Okay, that's not what she said. It's like, I don't need to see more brown-skinned people or LGBT. I understand it as that she doesn't want to see identity politics being brought into it. Like, hey guys, there's now black people. It's like, okay. Like, if that's the way that Lisa, which is how I'm going to interpret for now, and she might have a different way of looking, and she actually has an issue with brown skin, which, again, if she's a minority, then, like, isn't brown kind of a minority here? <laughs> Tan skin, I guess. Uh, the entire series was based on I Eastern and Indigenous peoples. Oh, man, that's just... Oh, Ryan, you're so SJW white. Again, I think that, again, the... Saying brown-skinned people, I don't need to see more brown-skinned people. That sounds racist. But if it's because... Or LGBT. The only way that I can interpret this to be like, ooh, that's kind of an issue. <laughs> 
is she means that Black Lives Matter, the political organization, not just having any person who's of a different skin color or like I, my assumption is that she meant to say it as which I'm going to go with it, go with it is that she probably meant and I'm probably justifying the crap out of this bullshit um that there isn't uh that identity politics should not be part of it you don't try to make it diverse make it into a, a, a set ethnic group like China like China like like Kenya like Kenya uh just like there's certain there's a certain ethnicity tied to your culture and that's what's happening within the entire universe in the real world that's bullshit it's horrible it's how people used to live and that's very tribal you're um you're gay well you should be in support of lgbt causes you're black you should be in support of black lives matter actions and causes and if you disagree well i don't understand you're black well i don't understand you're gay why don't you you're gay and you should be like that's the same thing it's it's one of the reasons why I'll, I, I try to call it out as often as possible because a it's it's its own universe and there's some problems that you that comes about from that but having your culture tied to your identity is so fucking wrong man <laughs> uh, it's practiced in the real world and that's that's an issue when people justify that hey look people are doing it therefore I should be doing it no they have done it doesn't mean it's good so okay let's move on Zhao Zhao Lin, what a great name that is. Uh, D. Martino and Co. are excellent writers. Ooh, I think they're good writers. I don't think they're excellent writers. And I fully expect them to do the live action version justice. I don't, though I do expect that they will introduce an LGBTQ character into the last airbender as they have done with the every series that they have made, which is kind of bullshit. Like, it, it's not... A, I remake the entire original series. Why change it? Hey guys, we need to have gay representation. Well, is it gay representation or bisexual representation? Well, anyone who's not straight. It's just like it, it because of that, because of the activity of politics of trying to inject your ideology that is LGBTQ. Hey guys, we need to inject into what has already been made more gay stuff. It's like, what does that have anything to do with good characters? I'm certain Avatar, um, Avatar Kyoshi, from what they said, could have been gay. Didn't matter. She was a bitch and a cunt and a horrible avatar, not because she was gay, but because of the action she took. I don't fucking care if there's a gay character. I don't fucking care. Stop trying to change the old shit because you can't create anything new on your own merit. That's how I see LGBTQ. They're the beta males who can't make anything successful, wait until make, there is something successful, and then inject their fucking swan, their venomous fangs into your skin and then just poison you. They, they stick a tapeworm up your butt and be like, well, at least it's not through the mouth. It's like, whoa, 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 whoa. There's a fucking tapeworm going up your butt. That's an issue. Why are you, why is this happening? Guys, it's wonderful. Like, no, it's, wait, what? It's like, what are we talking about? Stop trying to in, in, inject. I don't, if somebody mentioned, let's, let's, let's reverse this because, oh, you're sounding very bigoted. I'd agree, but let's flip it on its head and just introduce it this way. Though I do expect that they will introduce a straight character into the last uh, into the last Airbender, what the fuck does that have anything to do with the last Airbender? Oh, there's gonna be a new straight character. What the fuck? Tr stop it! That I don't fucking care about your sexuality. Stop trying to inject a particular worldview. It's like, well, we need more gay representation. Make your own shit. Uh, Steven Universe. Um, there's a lot of flaws within that show, but they made something new. If anything, you could recreate the show of uh, the original. Cre uh, um, or again, even though I'm, even though I just spent like the last thirty minutes railing against recreating the show, is that what they could do is recreate the show, not of de uh, of untextualizing things or decanonizing particular actions, but changing when the actions happen. Because from what I understand about the um, Steven Universe is that there's so many low points in the show that it's a, it's time and filler between the major va uh, things that happen within the show. 
um, of whether or not the, the, the cluster is going to be released for anybody who knows what that is. And, well, if there's a cluster that's about to release within, like, maybe a few days, if not a few weeks, there's a lot of episodes, like three or four or five, where they just relax on the farm and talk about, well, I like puppies. It's like, the cluster's about to destroy the fucking planet. So if they, if, if, if uh, I, don't, I don't know who the creator of it is, I think it's like Rose or something, that's, I think, Ruby Rose or something. If you removed that aspect and, and just try to streamline all the events, you could make it a lot better. But it doesn't have anything to do with the LGBTQ. You can make your own stuff and be amazing. What was created with Steven Universe? I thought they did amazing. I think it was an amazing concept. Oh, fusion is when they're both on the same scene, uh, both on the same wavelength, in harmony, and a euphemism for sex, but or sexual activities. So what? It was beautiful the way that they did it. That had nothing to do with it. S me being against the LGBTQ uh, in introduction, trying to insert it. it. It's like literally they're trying to insert their penis into any butt that will be open, and I'm just saying like, no, get away, get away from this. It's like. It's the same thing. It's the same activity. If anybody was out there saying, hey, um, though I do expect that they will introduce a straight character into The Last Airbender. What does that have any fucking thing to do with whether or not the character is going to be good? Why does that even matter? It's like a black character. Okay? If somebody said like, hey, uh, though I do expect that they will introduce a black character into The Last Airbender. Okay? It's exactly the same to me as if somebody said, though I do expect that they will introduce a white character into The Last Airbender. Why is that a fucking problem? There's a character that is going to be created to be to maybe streamline some of the, the issues that have been brought up to fan, uh, fan um, questions. Cool. Please don't change the original content, though. Like, you can add things, but they better fucking not change things. I know that's kind of contra like con not controversial, but kind of contradictive. You can add it, but don't change it. Maybe we get to see what happens with other characters um, while Avatar: The Last Air uh, the Avatar Gang is going out and going from place to place saving people. Maybe we can have an entire live action series where we have LGBTQ representation, a bunch of black people for whatever fucking sake in this Asian culture. And they are all going around saving people, but the point of the show is that A, they're not changing uh, the Avatar gang, and they're going through their own struggles. Maybe you get to see what happens after the Avatar gang goes away, having left some, uh, le leaving a town to its own um, device. We could see that. That would be something I would love to explore. That would be awesome. You're not changing the past, you're creating something new. You're creating something that adds on to something that I love. So. Okay, as they, um, as they have done with every series. So, Xiaolin, I praise your name, but your ideas are shit. Shantae Outlaw Williams. Same thing, I love your name, but you know I'm now cautious about what you have to say. I can't wait to see what they come up with the whole series. Um, with the whole series is fascinating. And I would love for them to add more to see if Aang to see Aang grow up and see what more they could do with it? I would rather... Okay. Wait. So is this going to be them growing, have been growing up? Like, it's, it's, it's them after they have done all their childhood shenanigans? And this is in their teenage, if not, they're already in their teenage, in like their um, young adult life? Like, if that's the case, I'm okay with that. But I don't see how it's going to be a good show if they don't bring on a head writer to make certain that they're honest or, or, or their continuity and the world makes sense. That's the one thing that I, one biggest gripe that I would have if they were not going to be changing the uh, original series. And I would love for them to add more to it. Uh, it C Ang, this woman is Shante. You're that you're grammar man more to see it and grow up and see what more they could do with it and it i would okay there's you got to put periods in this thing i would rather i would rather and make more real movies like the one in uh, uh, oh, oh, <laughs> what the fuck let's say let's hear that again i would rather okay um i would rather and make gosh your grammar sucks I would rather and make, okay, I would rather and make more real movies like the one M. Night Shyamalan produced. 
one, I don't think you're defending M. Night Shyamalan's reimagination of the film, trying to make a live action version of it. Because though, if anybody out there has not seen The Last Airbender from M. Night Shyamalan, M. Night Shyamalan has produced phenomenal films. He fucked up The Last Airbender. One biggest example that I can absolutely say without a doubt, he changes the main character's name from Aang in the original series, and then into his movie, he pronounced it Ung. Ung. Not Aang. Ung. The, the reason he thought that, because he wanted to make it more real with how it would be pronounced within that culture. His intent was there, but he fucked over. It doesn't matter of whether or not... This is A, a fake world, but it's its own world. In the world, he's called Aang, not Ung. 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 Oh, gosh, freak. Somebody... Two people liked it. Really? LOL. What, K-Man. Hey, I love that guy. LOL, what are you talking about? Have you ever seen that movie, or do you just have absolutely no taste in film? That is harsh, but it is a great question to ask. Or are you, or are you, or you, gosh, okay, K-Man, your, your question, it, gosh, this writing, guys, you gotta be better at your writing. Or you are M. Night writing the common, oh, okay, gotcha. I was, I was so thinking of a different question. I was so, okay, I was wrong, I was wrong. Or, you are M. Night writing the comment trying to look good. Uh, yeah, actually I would... Yeah. And then Zhao Lin with your stupid statement up here. Okay, let's see what you have to say. Um, no. The M. Night movie was a disaster. From the casting to the writing. It was an absolutely horrible... It was absolutely horrible on all fronts. Whatever they do... Uh, whatever they do it ne do... It needs to be as far from that as they can get. I'd agree with you on that one, Jalin. Something I actually agree with you on. Fantastic. Latte. Who was saying it was shoehorned? The ending wasn't shoehorned at all with The Last Airbender talking about the, uh, the, uh, what is it? The giant lion turtle. <laughs> okay. I thought they introduced the, the character during, now from what I remember, they introduced the giant lion turtle thing during the second season when they were in the library in the desert when they were reading books and collect and opening up books and one of them was either a giant lion turtle or Avatar Aang showed Katara that there was a giant lion turtle or something. So again, they introduced it. It's not like it was, I, don't, I, th I think I might have the word shoehorn uh, incorrect. I thought it like just jammed in there. So, they met all the original bending masters along the way. Appa, the moon, the, the moon, <laughs> the original bending masters. Oh shit, you're right. A giant lion turtle is an original bending master. They, he doesn't bend the elements, but the energy inside. Holy crap, I never realized that. That is so true. Good freaking job, Latte. Wow. Uh, Appa, the moon, the moles, the dragons, so it made sense for Aang to meet the original energy bender, the lion turtle. It was a perfect ending to that he was able to find an alternative way of defeating the Fire Lord without him straying from who he is. I truly hope Michael and Brian aren't listening to other people when they have already created an original master's masterpiece. Now, if the thing is that they're going to change the giant lion turtle and say that that was a horrible thing that should not have been in the original series, Michael and Brian can go fuck themselves in a closet deep in the mountains with a sharp knife. Like, I, it's like, it, you're so freaking wrong. It was, like, it's problematic. It's like, oh my gosh, you guys don't know why you got successful, and yet you're fucking it over. You're producing shit because you happen to sell anything of remnants of a memory of the original series that was Korra. It's created by the original Master's Piece. Again, there's some great things that are in Avatar Korra. I'll defend that there are great things. It's not canon because the world isn't canon. The characters aren't canon. Oh, man. So... Uh, me. Me. Oh my god, the show was perfectly fine as it was. Leave it alone. I'd agree with you on that one. Truth. 
Okay, well, I'm just reading your title. Your 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 name is Truth, so we better. Okay, we, okay. We. They are better. Oh, they just better not derail from the world and start putting extremely woke crap. Otherwise, the sh otherwise the show will go over. Uh, will be over before it has even begun. Mark my words. Get woke and go broke is not just words. It's a movement of a prediction of woke crap. I truly believe in that. I agree. When you put a message, a political message above profit, and more importantly, serving your customers, the people with whom are giving you stuff, the moment you become woke, as for an example, basketball, baseball, football, all three of those within the last month, if not the last week, opened up with their first, um, with their first event. Because they were um, promoting Black Lives Matter, which has been proven it is a, a, a lot of rioters and terrorists, because again, one person was burned alive in a pawn shop by, the, uh, by Black Lives Matter terrorists in Minneapolis. Yes, it has happened. So I can say that without, a, without, like, without shitting on black people, because Black Lives Matter and black people are different. Black Lives Matter is a political organization. Okay, Fairchild, what is your... Oh, man. Okay, he's overreacting. Oh, these are going to be fun. Fairchild, what? Avatar has always been woke. And one one great example is Avatar, or um, the the Kyoshi Warriors, and I think the third, fourth, sixth episode, it's, it's probably, it's in the beginning of the first season of the Avatar The Last Airbender, where the, where the Kyoshi Warriors and Sokka is being very sexist against, like, oh, you're women, you don't know how to do anything. And then the Kyoshi Warriors are very calm and studious and just, you know, teach him a lesson of humility. And he needs to be part of the group. He wants to learn from them. And the only way to learn from them is to actually don the gear of the Kyoshi Warriors. So he dons uh, the female dress and everything. And it's like they're, they're battle garments or something. And it's just he, he, lear he gets a big old hum humbled pie. But the thing is, is that it has always been woke. In today's world, that's not a good thing. It's like America is problematic. That's what that's woke. It's like, oh my gosh, I'm so aware of how evil America is. So let's burn the flag and Bibles. Yes, Black Lives Matter has burned Bibles, Christian Bibles. And any and all you black people that are praising or uh, that are practicing Christianity, well, you are just practicing racism because Christianity is racist. <laughs> oh man. Again, it has always been woke. There are woke moments. And if anything, that was, it, it worked because it, it wasn't about him, uh, again, fixing sexism, because for you to practice with us, you must, don't, you must practice our culture. I, you know, it's like, oh, wow, I probably, I probably wouldn't have done it. But at the same time, that is the correct way to have done it. If you want to learn from us, you have to don our gear. You have to act our way. You have to believe how we believe if you want us to give you anything, if you want us to share the knowledge that you are seeking. It's the same way with any profession. You want to become a monk? You have to do what the monks do. You want to become a warrior? You have to do what a warrior does. You want to become a parent? Go talk to parents and see what they do. Yeah, that's how you become a proper parent, a proper warrior, a proper monk, so on and so forth. You're just watching with your child eyes. What are you talking about? I, I, want, I want an example with what do you mean by child eyes if you can't see them, okay? Like, if anything, I think I've given you a perfectly example as to why you, what you can do as before woke and do it correctly. That, but in today's world, it's like, oh my gosh, gay! And the, and the outlandishness of saying gay all the time is, for me, the same thing of saying oh, straight! It's so weird. It's weird to base your entire value system on that. Your people, because they're straight, your people because they're gay, your people because they're white, they're black? What does their immutable characteristics have anything to do with the culture and values that they practice? Yeah. Okay. Back then, it was all about equality for people in color and women. No, it wasn't about color and women. No, it was about equality. People were being oppressed. They had a certain episode here and there about uh, addressing certain things, and I think it was very, not shoehorned, but over, that's the wrong word, overtly expressed in the first few episodes of the first season. I thought it was just hitting, the, hitting on the nose. It was rubbing the nose 
rubbing the nose, hitting the nose. Again, rubbing, <laughs> brow nosing is different, but it was just on, so on the nose, it was so blatant that it almost took me out of watching the entire series. But then after you get past that, it's not there anymore. Nobody cares. There's n Again, the equality of people, they don't bring up the color. They don't bring up, oh, you're a woman, ever again. They don't bring it up after the first few episodes. And the first few episodes are all about getting your entire series on track. Because you can have a first episode and then try to kind of like, you can retcon the second episode. You don't retcon the last episode, the last season. You don't. You, 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 if you're trying to make something, you see what works, you see what doesn't, and then you go with what works and you stay on that point. It's like I, I always give a, a, I have a forgiveness of the first few episodes of any series because you're trying to make something work. You're, it's like if maybe you went to extreme and then you're pulling it back for the rest of the series. It, it, that's okay. That's okay because you're trying to see what works with what the audience would enjoy. So, uh, so they uh, so they made one of the strongest characters in the show a woman of color, but that's kind of the issue is that the w the fact that she's a woman of color she's now it, she's now absent of any criticism that is fundamentally breaks the entire series. She can use all of the elements with with prof with proficiency at the age of four. No other avatar has ever been do able to do that before, or at least. It's like there, there was no skill involved to learning any of the other ones. She just knows how to do it. She is the epitome, the, the epitome of being a Mary Sue. She's a horrible connection to anything of Avatar The Last Airbender. She didn't have to work hard. She just is amazing. Everybody loves her. And if you don't love her, you're a meanie. <sighs> it seems as though you have the child eyes. It's one of the reasons why I all that I think that Black Lives Matter, LGBT, and feminism are all viruses. They're all vi vile. Is because you value immutable characteristics and have values based upon those values rather than saying, hey, man or woman, black or white, gay or straight, you need to act a certain way to be good. There's a certain thing that is of truth, and that's what matters. But she's a woman of color. And guess what? Isn't it through the child's eyes that you use all capital letters to be like, to really hone in on a point? It's like, a woman of color. It's like, that kind of sounds childish. Ha ha ha. It didn't seem strange to a child. These things never do. What? It didn't seem strange to a child? What are you talking about? Okay. And it's common now. Okay, okay that's, that's, that's one thing. You cannot base any... Um, Gary Beekler from... Uh, the Nerd Rotic channel on YouTube. He uses he goes with the Rotten Tomatoes video so often. He does. He uses it as, hey, look at what the audience believes. I think that's an incredibly good point. You can't use it as a basis. Just because something is common, like 80% of people in America are living paycheck to paycheck, do not save, do not invest, do not do anything with having do not even cut back on their expenses. They don't. They believe that they can't. Is it common? Yes. Should we do it? No. How? What do you need to cut back on? Do you need to cut the cable bill? Do you need to uh, save some rent by moving in to, and being a um, and being a roommate with somebody? If you don't want to, that's okay. You have the choice to. But the choice of you not of living paycheck to paycheck, that it, just because it's common doesn't make it good. Oh, I hate that argument. You can use it, but it seems to be a basis that, well, it's common now, thanks to people like these creators. Like Avatar, crea Avatar Korra, they did some good things. The show sucks fundamentally because it's just not Avatar. Thanks to these people. Oh my gosh, Fairchild, you're so fucking woke. Gosh, I can already guess your politics. You're a liberal, you're SJW, you're in support of Black Lives Matter, you're LGBTQ, um, supportive, you're, fe you're probably feminist. And again, you can you be a gay person and not be LGBTQ? And if the, if the answer is yes, well, they just don't care about gay stuff, gay gay uh, progression in society. Ah, so if they're gay, they have to vote a certain way. They have to do it because they're gay. You have to vote this way because you're black. <laughs> it's the same argument. Gosh, Fairchild, you're fucking shitty. Wow, you're the reason that society is shit. Like, really, this this person is shit. So, and it's common now, thanks to people like these creators. But back then, that was woke as fuck. Yes, but the first few episodes were very on the nose. It's so awkward. And then the reason, the way that they made people equal, 
is that they moved away from race and skin color and sex, and they made characters competent. It's amazing to see a very competent villain. The princess, Princess Azula, was phenomenal. Not because she's great for being a woman. She, it's like, no, she's fucking badass being born and being raised, not just born, but being raised um, as a prodigy and having that like that bent of like, well, I get to do whatever I want because I'm the princess and just like kept diving, delving into that world. And she was never corrected. She never got challenged on her bad actions. And if she did, well, she's the princess. She's a prodigy. She's amazing. She, she's amazing. So leave her alone. That's had nothing to do with her sex. It had nothing to do with how she looked. She was pretty, but crazy. <laughs> Yoon. He's overreacting. It's like too fucking... Oh my gosh. It's, again, I could use so many words here. He's overreacting. Like you said, Avatar has always been woke, so let's put more gay shit in it. It's the same thing as somebody said, let's put more straight stuff in it. It's like, let's put more straight stuff in it. Yeah! That just sounds so fucking lame. That's not what I want to see. If that's the value that you have, focusing on the sexuality of the characters rather than trying to create good characters, good, competent characters, competent villains, well, as long as they're... Well, we can't have any villain who's gay, and if they are gay, they need to, they need to be... Um, their, their justice needs to be... We need to love them. No, if they're a bad character, maybe they need to be killed off. But they're gay! It's all about love. That's what being woke is nowadays. And it's horrible. It's absolutely awful. Oh, they had two whole episodes in the first season calling out guys for being sexist and close-minded. Yeah, they did. Uh, they had two whole episodes. And again, those episodes were so on the nose that it took me out of like, Oh, sexism, I get it, whatever, let's move on. It's like, I don't care about that. And if you're telling me that, well, I should care about it. Like, I don't care about it. I'm fighting back on it. If you want to make things equal, don't mention it. Somebody's in a wheelchair in Avatar The Last Airbender. I don't know if anybody knew that. The reason that he was amazing was because of his attitude towards him being permanently in a wheelchair. His father is a great inventor. His mother, for un unfortunately, died. He was fortunate to have a great attitude about life. He's able to fly and glide through the air. Maybe not as the spirit of, like, Avatar uh, The Air Last Airbender being, you know, sort of salty about that. Because he was so hopeful that there would actually be more airbenders, but it was just that they were gliding rather than just, like, flying with a good spirit. Um, I think that he was over, like, he was way over the top. I don't know how he could have actually done that uh, in his wheelchair to have that type of glider. But at the same time, I think he was a good additive. I think he had too few lines, too few ca uh, character moments in the entire show. I, I, you could have added a few more things where he was probably working with his father as learning how to become a greater, a great inventor. So whenever his father passes, that he becomes an inventor. Or it's just his character wasn't developed as much, which it's unfortunate because, again, he's a very uplifting character. So anytime that there's like bad things happening, he's just like, hey, come on, guys. Here's, it's like, eh, we're still alive, aren't we? Yeah, you're right. <laughs> it's like, okay, here we go, let's keep on going. It was only increased the more the franchise expand, uh, expanded. Well, that's not a good thing, just because, again, the franchise expanded. Uh, Disney Trilogy. Oh, the Disney Trilogy expanded upon Star Wars, but it was a fucking wreck. It doesn't mean it's good. Korra is bi. Kyo actually, Korra, okay, Kyoshi is bi. What the fuck does that have anything to do with whether or not they're a good character? Because they're bi? Like, they're, Kyoshi's bi. Okay, she's still a fucking cunt. She's still horrible. She's a bitch. She's a fucking dick. She needs to go die. <laughs> she's a horrible avatar. <laughs> Kyoshi's the worst. I think the worst avatar. I would, I would, I, I would, I would place a bet on that. She's the worst avatar. Or at least the known avatar. Worst, worst known avatar. We don't really know anything about this sexual orientation, which doesn't fucking matter! Oh my gosh, your sexual... We don't know the sexual orientation for most of the avatars. What the fuck? It doesn't matter! Unless you really care about that type of shit. 
It's like somebody saying like, hey guys, what's the race of these guys? Because they look, they look, they, they look brown, but they're not really dark black. And that's the true black. It's like, ooh, it's like a light skinned brown person. Well, I need to know whether or not they're Latina, that they're a la they're a Latin, they're, they're, they're Hispanic, or of whether or not they're just a tan white person. It's like, what, okay, like A, it's whatever the characteristic is, but you're just honing in on it. It's it's one of the things that should just be like, here is a char an immutable characteristic that they cannot change about themselves. Boom, we move on. Because what matters is the development of the character, not the immutable characteristic of them. But you keep on, oh my gosh, so woke and brave. It's like, if you focused on straightness, it would be as awkward. As awkward. Not less awkward. Not more awkward. The exact same amount of awkward. Oh my, Korra is straight. Kyoshi is straight. We don't really know anything about the sexual orientation for most of the avatars. This is like a fucking bigot talking about. But no, 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 I'm not a bigot. I just care about the immutable characteristics of people because that's the most important part. <laughs> It's like, guys, we need more wokeness. We need more bisexual people in the show. Why? It's like saying we need more straight people in the show. It's so weird. <laughs> oh my gosh. It's like saying we, it's like saying that Avatar, not Avatar. It's like saying um, the Crystal Gems, uh, Steven Universe. We need more, sh we need more straight people on the show. What? Like, I don't fucking care. Why do you need more straight people on the show? If anything, it's a very gay show. I think some of what they do is phenomenal. I think there are some concepts that I think they fell shy of what they could have made amazing. Like, she, she, Ru Ruby Rose, I think, was actually the creator of uh, Steven Universe. There's so many flaws within that show, that series. But there's so many things that they've actually created, or she actually created, that did wonders that actually broke some tropes that actually made new characters I thoroughly enjoyed. Garnet, strongest character on the show. Um, if anything, a stereotype of her being black. She has an afro. <laughs> but again, so what? So fucking what? She's a strong character. If anything, a strong um, the 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 mother of the, the the den mother of the entire group. Awesome, cool. <laughs> it had nothing to do with her gayness. Oh my gosh, I'm in a lesbian relationship. The fact that you value it is what's fucking annoying. It's just like saying, I, well, there needs to be more straight people on the show. Why? Why does there need to be more straight pe people? This is ancient China. This, if, if anything, there's no need for your sexual orientation to be gay. You can't, you can't add to the gene pool. You're killing it. <laughs> it's like, like I think you're that your father and your mother are just so happy you ended their bloodline. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> A, I don't fucking care. But if you value it, I'm so worried about it. Oh my gosh. Can't, oh my gosh. Let's read that sentence again. We don't really know anything about the sexual orientation for most avatars, but if either Brian or Mike came out tomorrow and said, every avatar has a bisexual inclination, I wouldn't even be surprised. That's the point! <laughs> Just because the writer, the creators of the show makes it canon doesn't make it good. I don't know how these people function in the real world of whether or not they can tie their shoes. Oh my gosh, guys. That's how they think. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh wait, I'm saying oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh. oh, it's sucking me in dry. It's sucking me dry. Ah, help me. Oh, so again, if every avatar has a bisexual inclination, so your avatar Aang is now gayish? So you're literally making Avatar Aang gay for the sake of, yay, we have representation that represents us. Well, as a straight person, where's my representation? Well, you have so many straight people in so many shows. We need to change your straight character that you enjoy and make him gay for our sake. Fine, fine, guys, we'll just make him a bisexual, but I'm straight. Oh, no, no, that works for me, as long as he's not straight. It's, it's, you're trying to change old content, and again, the value of whether or not they're all, like, I, I don't fucking care. You're making it the issue. It's like, guys, we need more black people on the show. It's like, well, let, let's do it this way. An all-black film, okay? 
Um, one great example, it's like, it, A, I can't really name that many. <laughs> so I agree that there's a disproportionate amount of, let's just say, white people in movies. But let, let's just do it this way. Um, Shaft. Shaft is almost, if not entirely, a black film. I haven't watched it. It just, it, it was kind of like The Spirit or Sin City. I like the sh I like Sin City, but it was so over the top. I would not want to have watched it if I could make that choice again. I'm glad I watched it, but I was too. I was a little bit young when I was when I watched when I watched that show, and I shouldn't have watched. I shouldn't have watched it again at that age. It's like saying in that movie, "Oh my god!" Uh, in Shaft, "Oh my gosh, guys, we need more white people on the show." Why? <laughs> it's just like why, why? Because we need more rep. Excuse me, representation. So you're saying someone is only represented not through their values, not through their ideas, not through their culture, not through the actions that they practice, but instead of whether or not the person is black or white. Their immutable characteristics on the screen, that's the only way somebody will be represented. So if I only I can only love Steven Universe because the main character is straight. Not because of the plot, not because of the development of character re reactions and of, uh, to the events that happen, not to the character development of how somebody is exploring and becoming better, not of them being aware of the issues that they have and they have to overcome those problems. It's the fact that Steven Universe is a straight white male. That's the only reason as to why I like the show. It's like, A, he's an annoying little kid that says, hey guys, we should be happy. And he's incredibly inconsistent with like, well, we shouldn't kill. And then in another episode, guys, we should kill. He, he, he changes based off whatever the plot needs him to be as. So he's an incredibly inconsistent character. But, the char but that character, Steven Universe, is not really the reason I watch the show. He's like Asta from Black Clover. Asta, for anybody who hasn't seen that, episode, uh, that anime, He's an incredibly annoying character. He's one of the reasons why I almost stopped watching about two episodes in. <gasps> ah, 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 that's how he talks. He always talks with the, ah, ah, I'm going to be the best. That he talks like that, and it's so annoying. But as a character, it's the reason why I like him. If, so the only, it's, it's so weird that you have to think that you value a character, you're represented by a character, not through their values, not through their opinions, not through the culture that they practice, but the fact of whether or not they have an immutable characteristic. You're the problem, okay? You're the problem. And you make everything worse, do, making, th making people try to pick sides of like, well, aren't you for the LGBTQ group? Um, I'm not for a political organization that tries to change culture based off an immutable characteristic. I'm not in favor of that. No, I am not in favor of the LGBT group. If you can clip that out of context, but that's my entire point of view. I think it's weird that you think that Black Lives Matter, as a political organization, is important based off your immutable characteristics. I think what happens to black people has historically been disproportionately weighing them. But at the same time, that doesn't mean that I support your actions of rioting in the street. Well, there's many other protesters. Are you calling out the riots? Are you calling out the, the 20 people that got killed during uh, uh, Chicago? Are you going to call out the many, 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 many black people that went out rioting? One person with a U-Haul going to a store breaking the windows and taking whatever they wanted. If anything, it sounds like black lives don't matter because they don't value anyone else other than themselves. But again, that would be a very racist take, but I'm just looking at the evidence and saying, wow, that this is weird. But if you're just, because if you're saying, well, black lives matter, go out right and loot. Black lives matter, go out and burn somebody alive. Minneapolis pawn shop, go look it up, it's horrible. The issue is that if you associate your identity, you associate your ideology, your political movement, based off an immutable characteristic that you cannot change, unlike your values, your opinions, what you care about, your, your, your perspective, these things change and they can be relatable regardless of whatever your identity might be. Whatever, not your identity, I hate saying that your physical immutable characteristics okay you can identify with somebody who's in a wheelchair and black i'm not a white I, i'm not a black person in a wheelchair but i can still identify with somebody who's in a wheelchair and black because of the values and the practices that they take and maybe even the the challenges they have to overcome 
not the fact that they're a black person that I have to, that they have to be a white person for me to like them, that I have to be a black person to like them. Uh, that be, be, that them being black means that I have to be a black person to like the character. It's the fact that they are a character, and they're developing. You don't develop an immutable characteristic. So, oh, man. just so on and so forth. And there's lo load more comments. I don't think I can. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, let's go with this last one and I'll be done. It makes sense that they want to add a little context for the whole lion turtle thing, but I don't think it's necessary and has um, and has the potential to derail the flow of this story if they waste time explaining everything. That's what the last of uh, the the legend of Korra is for after all. But actually yeah, I I I I understand your sentiment, Kalia. I think that the the legend of Korra unfortunately is a tragis tragedy. It's a travesty, not not tragedy, a travesty upon the original series because there's things that they retcon that there's no there's you don't blood bending is something you can teach people. Okay, it is an art style, but the thing is, you need the full moon to do it. But if you don't need the full moon, is it genetics that you can pass it on to your children and have them do it, or is it anybody can learn without the full moon to do it? Cora wasn't able to do it unless she was in the under the full moon and she didn't need to do any quote unquote bend, water style so to speak so but you still needed to use your physical body uh it's just it, there's some things that just go oh out out they're just outlandish <laughs> that's outlionish <laughs> oh man Again, yeah, I might get a lot of criticism for all, everything that I was saying about The Legend of Korra. I think they do some phenomenal things well. Some things phenomenally. But I don't think it's even on the same playing field because some of the content has been retconned of the original series. And whenever Legend of Korra goes on to the, uh, in, into, onto Netflix, I will most likely be signing up for Netflix, going through each and every single episode live, and then detailing as to, well, this is why it works and this is why it doesn't. It's probably going to be the best way I'm going to be doing it because uh, making uh, edited videos for me takes like four or five hours minimum. And there's other things I have in my day. And even if I do it, make a four or five hour film, that might just be with me writing the entire script of whether or not, like, well, should I put this, should I put that? It takes days to make and stuff. So, yeah, that's just, yeah. It's like if I could have, if, if I, if I, this is more of me just thinking, A, I'm tired and I'm going to be closing out for the night. But if I had a team, that's what I would do. That's the one thing I would do is I would want to make quality YouTube videos. This is me just ranting and talking about certain things that I believe that are very important and are truthful. I'd love to hear from you, and I'd love to think. Uh, I'd love to hear what your thoughts are on the, all these things, including what I had to say. I'd love to hear what you think. I, I, the thing is, I want to. I would love to have my own team that could. Hey, here's what we're going to be doing. Here's the script of what we're going to be writing. Somebody needs to go out and look out for all the the, the clips that we're going to be putting associated with each of the lines and words that we're going to be having because that takes forever trying to find the right one. Because you can find one that's just okay, but I like to find the one that's as perfect as possible. And it doesn't mean that it is perfect as possible, but I take painstaking detail at least to try to make it as good as possible. But being by myself, it is such a drag. I really do. Again, to have my own team, I think you could have like a team of three to four people um, that could like just dominate making quality videos of like, hey guys, this is the content that we're going to pr be producing, and here's the script that we're going to be writing, and even having it uh, f uh, proofread with somebody else, and me being the director of where the video is going to be going, just because somebody has input doesn't make them correct, but I cannot dismiss what somebody has uh, what input that somebody else has and that's what gr that's what's phenomenal about it, uh, having a team that you have that different perspective that can at least weigh, that I at least can weigh in on the situation so it's like at least weighing it and at least considering it I don't have to do what their option what they consider but I do at least have to listen I have to tell well, are you sure? okay what about this what about this oh, okay yeah you're right you're right okay maybe I need to, I need to think I need to rethink that and then that, you have those checks and balances, and that's what makes a team 
creation such such an amazing thing at least in my opinion there's 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 gen, there's uh gems who can just do it by themselves a great example is Mahler M A U L E R from uh YouTube he can do it by himself he he takes a, a weeks if not months to create a video but when he does it it is released perfectly so I I highly recommend going and checking out his channel if anybody hasn't seen him but with that being said this is the end of the video Please post your comments, questions, and concerns right down below because I'd love to hear back from you. Please smash that like and subscribe button because that would greatly help this channel out. And most importantly, go out and do wonders. Thank you very much for being a part of this, and I'll see you next time. Beep.